Let's take a look at Kubernetes ingress system for routing external traffic to different services within a Kubernetes cluster. The traffic here represents the external traffic, so HTTP and HTTPS requests coming from users or external clients. The ingress controller is responsible for managing access to these services running inside the Kubernetes cluster, and it processes the ingress resource to route traffic to the correct services based on defined rules for example, URL paths or domains of the incoming request. And the ingress controller acts as a single entry point for the cluster. Service one and service two represent different Kubernetes services, which expose groups of pods to external traffic. And a service groups together pods that perform the same task. And the ingress controller directs traffic to the correct service based on the incoming request. The pods are the individual instances of your application running inside the Kubernetes cluster. And each service has multiple pods and the traffic for each service is load balanced across these pods. So the flow is relatively simple. We have external traffic hitting the ingress controller, the ingress controller routing the traffic to either service one or service two based on predefined routing rules. And each service directs the traffic to one of its associated pods which handles the request and response accordingly. Now, let's take a look at a ingress resource. This is the ingress manifest, but I'll first provide a bit of pretext on this ingress resource. So in Kubernetes, we have the ingress resource and the ingress controller, and they provide a way to expose services to external clients while offering advanced routing mechanisms, such as path-based routing, host-based routing, SSL termination, and load balancing. So here we have an ingress manifest, and the ingress resource is a Kubernetes API object that manages external access to services, typically through HTTP and HTTPS. And it defines rules that control how the traffic is routed to the services. These are called routing rules. So there is host-based routing, and there's also path-based routing. So for host, for host-based routing, you can configure rules like example.com routes to service one, and api.example.com routes to service two. For path-based routing, this is more about the path. So you could have example.com slash API endpoint routes to service one and example.com slash blog endpoint routes to service two. So now I will delete this and we can take a look at the sample ingress manifest. So in this example, traffic that's sent to example.com slash API will be routed to service one. So this is path-based routing. And if we look at this path, the slash blog endpoint, this will be routed to service two. So what is a ingress controller? Well, the ingress controller is a Kubernetes component that fulfills the ingress resource by watching the Kubernetes API for updates and provisioning the necessary routing based on the ingress rules. So unlike other Kubernetes objects like services or pods, the ingress resource doesn't function on its own. It requires an ingress controller to interpret its rules and manage external traffic routing. So services and pods, you can think of these as Kubernetes objects that are self-sufficient, but the ingress manifest here does not handle the actual interpretation of the rules and managing the traffic routing. That's where the ingress controller comes in, which is a separate uh, Kubernetes object. So the ingress controller can be implemented using different proxy solutions like Nginx or HAProxy or Envoy. And these solutions serve as reverse proxies or load balancers, which manage traffic at layer seven which is the application layer of the OSI model. So the ingress controller workflow is as follows. 
The controller will monitor ingress resources and configures itself dynamically to route incoming HTTP and HTTPS traffic accordingly. And if using an Nginx ingress controller, for example, Nginx will update its internal configuration whenever there's a change to the ingress object. Next, let's briefly talk about ingress annotations and configurations. So annotations are a powerful way to add extra configurations or behaviors to the ingress resource. And these annotations can be used to configure things like SSL termination, which is annotations for specifying SSL certificates to encrypt traffic between the client and the ingress controller. There's also rate limiting, so to control the rate of incoming requests to avoid DDoS or overloading the services. There's also custom headers, which adds or removes headers for requests and responses. And finally, there's rewrite targets, which means to modify the URL path before routing the traffic to the service. So an example of adding uh, an annotation for SSL termination would look something like this. So you have metadata, annotations, and then within annotations, you have Nginx ingress Kubernetes IO rewrite target and Nginx ingress Kubernetes IO SSL redirect true. So this is an example of adding an annotation for SSL termination.